Hey guys, and welcome to part two of my UX case study series. If you haven't watched the first video, I highly recommend that you check it out first. In that video, I talk about how I choose a topic to write about, how I strategize, plan, and also write it with ChatGPT. So if you haven't seen that one, that's going to give you a lot of context and also help you with the tools that you're gonna need for this video. And in this video, I want to talk about how to create the actual visuals for your UX case study. So to start off, you're going to need your case study document that we created from the previous video and you're also going to need Figma. Figma is going to be where you create your presentation and all of your assets for your case study. If you don't have Figma, I do have a link in my description which you can use, but once you have Figma open, you're going to create a new design file. And in that design file, you're going to create three separate pages. The first is your UX cover image. So this is like your hero image or like the big headlining image that is going to be on your portfolio. The next one is case study images. And the third one is presentation deck. What I like to do first is start with the presentation deck. And the reason for that is because I'm in that point in my career where I already have three case studies on my portfolio that I feel very confident in. And when I'm looking for new opportunities or talking to potential employers, what I want to use to really wow them would be a new presentation that I can show them. So for me, I just like to prioritize creating the presentation tech first before creating what is gonna go on my portfolio website. However, if you are looking to transition into the field and get your first junior UX design job, or even if you're just like an intermediate looking to move up into a senior role, I highly recommend that you start with the actual case study that goes on your portfolio because that is what recruiters are going to scan through to see if they want to do a phone screening for you. And this video should be timestamped, so if you want to jump around to whatever is most relevant to you, then you can do that. So going into my presentation, I'm going to show you how I like to organize my Figma file. And I have been doing it this way since my very first UX design job is something that I've just carried through and through because it works so well for me and like it just really makes sense in my head so I haven't really found a way or a reason for me to change it. So to start off the first thing I'm going to do is hit the F key on my keyboard and that is going to change your right hand sidebar to show you all of the different frames that Figma can offer you and in the presentation drop down I am going to choose 16 by 9. You should always choose the biggest one available just so you have that real estate to really create what you want to. And for that first frame, I'm just going to title it title, which is, you know, obvious. Then I'm going to use Control D, or if you're on a Mac, then Command D. And I'm just going to duplicate that frame that we just created. And I'll drag it over to like give us a good amount of room because we're going to connect them all at the very end into a prototype, which is going to create our presentation. Figma gives you like an infinite size of a workspace. So just make sure you have enough room so you can freely move things around and just not feel too cramped when you're working. So the next slide that we just duplicated, I'm going to title this one overview. And in this slide, the content that you want inside is pretty much like your agenda, your objectives, whatever you want to cover in this presentation. And it's really easy to think of the content that is going to go inside of this because it is the exact same as the headers that you created in your case study document. I'm pretty much just taking whatever I created and made into a header in there and turning it into an agenda item for this presentation. So my objectives or agenda based on what my headings were in my case study document are the overview, research, measuring success, strategy, solution, impact, reflection and a final thank you slide. So I just take all of these and then I just continue duplicating my slides until I have one slide for each of these items. And when I do this, I create the slides in a list that like goes down because it's easier for my brain to understand them all as different sections. And it's just easier to have them all on my screen so I can get like a really clear kind of overall view of how these slides are going to look and how many are in each section. I think when you have your slides all like in one kind of horizontal line, when you start moving things around, deleting things, it just gets kind of messy. So I like having it kind of sectioned often to do different sections or paragraphs for me to understand better and just like be able to see all of them all at once. And for these different sections, not all of them are going to have the same number of slides. So for example, my measuring success slide, that is only going to be one because I'm only going to talk about my KPI 
guys for the project but when it comes to like research or my approach or even like the final solution I might have four or five slides for each of these sections and that really helps me as I start visualizing and practicing the presentation in my head when I'm just like going over it and creating these slides because I can tell which one is going to be too long or which one is too short and I might need to like adjust how many slides I have in each one. When you're presenting a case study presentation in an interview, the typical time allotted is usually about 15 minutes, so you kind of want to practice with that in mind. And in my impact section, I always like to include the word onwards somewhere in the slide or in like a heading or subheading because my very first UX design job, I had a design lead and the article that he wrote when he decided to like leave his job was titled Onwards. So in a kind of like a homage kind of way, I feel like I'm just, you know, paying tribute to this person who took a chance on me and gave me my very first UX design job. So it, I've always kind of just like done that and it's just something that I've always like included in all of my presentations. But yeah, I have all of my slides laid out as you can see on my Figma file and it's really easy to navigate, right? So now I want to talk about the actual like layouts and components of each slide. So for each slide that I have in my case study presentation, I like to include the title of the case study, the section that we're in, my name, and what comes next. So what the next section is going to be, I feel like just giving your users a frame of reference to where they are along in your presentation journey is helpful for him, them to see like where you plan on going with this. Plus it also acts as like a little trigger for your brain to know what's coming and you can kind of like mentally prepare for that. And as for the title slide, this one is pretty much the same too. I always include my name, the title of the case study, the next section, and I always make sure to leave room for the date that the presentation is happening on and the company I'm presenting to. It's just something that I've picked up from working as a UX design consultant. This is something really easy that you can do to make yourself look more organized, more professional, just like on top of things. And anytime you can kind of like customize something for someone that you're presenting to is always like an advantage that you can add. And I really don't see a lot of people talking about this, but it's such a simple thing that you can really use to make yourself look more thoughtful to as a designer. Like if even for a moment you can get the person you're presenting to, your potential future employers to be like, whoa, this designer created a presentation just for us. Like that's such a huge win for you. So definitely something like really small, but so valuable if you decide to do it. And I also wanted to say that for all of my case study presentations, they all follow this layout. They all look kind of the same, but in reality, it really doesn't matter. So for 99% of cases, when you are presenting a case study, to a potential employer, you're only gonna present one. So like they'll never know if your case study presentations all look the same. So I wouldn't try to like overcomplicate it and try to find like different layouts for every single one of your presentations. You really don't need to. Just find something that works for you and just go with it. It's definitely more valuable for you to spend your time actually working on the assets and the presentation and the storytelling part of your case study presentation instead of worrying about like how to change up the layout every time you create one of these. Before we design the visuals, I want to talk about theming your case study presentation. Now I don't think at all that you need to go super crazy on this. If you're interested, you can totally check out like Instagram and TikTok for like presentations and see the really cool things that people can do there, I will leave a link to my favorite account that does like presentations and PowerPoints for like K-pop songs and stuff. But like you really don't need to go as hard as that if you don't want to. In fact, like unless you want the company that you're going to be working for to ask you to create all of their presentations and do their marketing assets, I really don't think that you should go that hard into creating your presentation anyway. It's really about your storytelling and presentation skills for your case study. Like really creating presentations isn't UX work, nor is it something that you can put on your resume. Um, that being said though, I think 
if you are looking for your first UX job or if you just really want to change into a, moving into a new company, then I'm not gonna judge. Like you, you do whatever you want to do. However, I really do think theming your case study presentation is a good way to show how thoughtful and creative you can be as a designer, which is definitely something that you want to showcase when you're interviewing for UX design positions. And it doesn't need to be anything like super complicated. You can show theming in like really small, subtle ways. So for example, my last case study presentation was about creating a design system. So I'm going to show you the title slide for that presentation deck. And you can see that in the title slide, since we're creating a design system, it's kind of like you selected the text element in Figma. I still have all the same components there. Like I have my name, I have my title of the case study, the date that I'm presenting it, the company that I'm presenting it to, like a little placeholder. I also even have a disclaimer, but just like from this, like it's very relatable to what I'm talking about, which is creating a case, uh, which is creating a design system in Figma. And it kind of looks like you're editing a text element in Figma. So like just really little subtle kind of things there can show you as just being a little bit more like, huh, they, they put some thought behind what they're doing. Now for the visuals themselves, I just take whatever notes I made in my case study document to create images for, and I just create those images in Figma. I usually like to do this on my second page, which is case study images, and I just create like a frame for each one. When I do this, I do like to stick with one color palette, and that color palette comes from the final solution. So that's just really gonna tie everything together between like your designs that you have. I even use the same color palette in my presentation deck and everything just feels a lot more cohesive. One way I like to do this is if you are planning on putting wireframe images in your case study and you chose those like really flat grays originally for, for your wireframes, I like to change them out with colors that are similar to the ones in the color palette. So for example, my solution, like my finished product is very blue, very purpley. So I just use kind of like lighter blues and purples to create this wireframe asset and I use it for my case study and presentation. It just makes things look a little bit more put together. I also like to change names or hide data for privacy and just filter out any other like sensitive information that are in my screenshots or our visuals or like data tables. And one thing that I really recommend is just to find more interesting or creative ways to show your data or show your deliverables. You can go on Pinterest and look up like presentations or PowerPoints and really get a sense of how many different ways there are to lay out information and to compose a slide. And when I'm creating this, I do like to see how it all kind of comes together. So what I like to do is have a frame of my portfolio and then I just try to fit all of my assets and like use dummy text if I have to, to see what my portfolio is actually going to look like. Then you can go in the top right hand corner in Figma and use the little present mode so you can see and kind of experience how a recruiter or a UX designer would scan through your case study and it'll help you see like, is this too long? Is it too short? Is, are there enough images to kind of break up the text? Different ways that I like to organize and like kind of lay out my case study is I'll try using like single column, two columns, um, images on one side and text on the other. And then I kind of like alternate them as we move down. I'll use bullet points. I'll make quotes bigger. Um, I'll use like a darker background to kind of really highlight a section. And I'll use like a lighter text when my portfolio is very like light background dark text and I'll just kind of see how they look and modify it as I need to. And once my images are done, I like to copy the images into my presentation deck and just put them wherever I need them to be. And I also like to take the text from my case study document that I wrote in Google Docs and that I showed you guys in my last video. So here I'm pretty sparing honestly when it comes to text. I really don't plan on using them very often unless I get like stuck or I kind of like lose my thought process. So it's really like text is used very minimally, <laughs> minimally to the point where if someone else got a hold of this presentation, they really wouldn't know how to present it or know what I'm doing to begin with because there's just really not enough context there. And I think that's kind of the goal I have in mind when I'm presenting and creating a presentation. I'm really looking to show the people I'm presenting to that I know this inside and out. I did the work and I know how to talk about it. And I feel like very proud and also 
very passionate about what I was able to do. But yeah, I think that's kind of basically it. Your cover image should be like your final solution, but present it in a really nice way. You can look at, I would recommend Dribble for you to kind of look at how designs can be laid out because it is honestly a whole separate skill in and of itself, like creating a nice background and like environment for your design to live is quite difficult. For me, I've kind of like moved away from creating things that are tilted at like an angle because I feel like I've just been looking at them for a very long time and my neck is kind of sore. So I'm kind of over that. Usually I just do like something normal, <laughs> something straight on, but it's really up to you. I feel like putting together the visuals for your case study, in my experience at least, has definitely been the thing that took the longest for me because I'm just like constantly running through the presentation in my head and I really feel like I'm kind of finally solidifying how I want to tell the story. So what this all took me, all this work was about three or four days of just like work on my on my visuals and maybe about like half a day on the actual written part with a huge thank you from ChatGPT. So I'd say in total, this whole case study took about four days of just like solid, solid work. And I know I told you guys that I was going to show you how I like put the actual case study and put it all together into my portfolio, but I made the mistake and I think it was because of that last video where I was just looking at my portfolio for way too long and then I convinced myself that I actually kind of hated it so I'm actually in the process of redesigning my entire portfolio so that is probably not going to happen in this video I'm still working on it um just let me know if you want to see it I don't I feel like it's kind of boring anyway like just seeing me copy and pasting like code and images and stuff but yeah just let me know if that is something that you guys want to want to see me do but I hope this video <laughs> was able to help you guys as you create your case studies this this is just how I do things. This is how my thought process is and just like what I found has worked for me creating, I can't even like probably like a dozen different case studies. And yeah, if you don't want to do any of this or if you want to take pieces of it, I highly recommend you do and just find what works for you so that this process can get easier and easier for you as you advance in your career. As a UX designer, you are always going to be writing case studies and yeah, just do what works for you, make it easier for yourself so that you can spend the time and like your valuable time improving your skills in other areas or just enjoying more like work-life balance. So yeah, um, I think I'll end this video here. I do want to say a huge thank you for watching this video and the previous one. These two are in a case study playlist that I have on my YouTube page now. And yeah, thanks again for watching as always. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.